And to the left of the screen there, we have a common carp, which is just minding its own business, swimming around the tank. Common carp live for about 20 years, a severe invasive species in many parts of the world, due to the fact that they're extremely powerful with no natural predator of any kind on most lakes, at least beyond a certain size. Some lakes have a bit of a, uh, what is it, like a, is it an otter problem? There's another invasive species in the UK which is apparently causing problems. Vole? Otter? Mink, that's the one I wanted. The American mink is apparently causing a bit of a problem because it's an invasive species hunting for the invasive species, which is now the source of a, of a major, com uh, well, like a, a, an industry here in the UK. The carp fishing scene has exploded. But yeah, just minding its own business. Also in the tank, you have a bream to the top left there. A thin disc-shaped uh, fish that uh, many people eat, apparently. I didn't actually know that. There might actually be a, an ocean-going bream. They might just be... I'm not sure if it's the, it's the European bream, that thing there. A freshwater species. Considered something of a nuisance fish, to be honest, but they can get quite large. Sort of dinner plate shaped. At the back there, the beautiful stripy specimen is a perch. It is a predatory fish that is um, that schools around and is a uh, shoals schools shoals moves in a group, and is actually very pretty. I, I caught my first perch, uh, I think, at the start of last year, and I was very impressed. Uh, in addition, hang on, whoopsie, do 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 do. Fuck, how do I select it? There we go. Uh, in addition, the tank has a lulu fish swimming around, uh, swimming around. So about a lifespan of about ten years. Uh, favorite food, cheese, uh, any sort of meat, sausages. Uh, renowned for how badly she smells, like all the time. Bloody hell. Like bubbles continually rising from her anus. Likes cuddles. Hang on. Oh no, what have I done? Uh oh, hang on. Uh, I fucked up, I fucked up. There we go. I'll just leave her up there. Down there. <sighs> Anyway, hi everyone. Hi and welcome. I hope you're having a nice day today. Uh, yeah, sorry for being a little bit late there. Um, I just got back from the dog walk and um, yeah, I stopped at a nearby cafe and I picked up a dog sausage for Lulu. <clears throat> Basically just a normal sausage, but they chopped it up into little pieces so that dogs can eat them in bite-sized chunks. Uh, so Lulu was following me around the park going, oh my god, he's got sausage. Oh my god. And she was going crazy every time I gave, gave her a piece of sausage. But unfortunately, she also got quite arsy with other dogs that tried to approach and get attention. Because she's like, she's gonna, it's going to take my sausage. She was getting jealous, is my point. Anyway, um, so, what's going on? So, once again, I can only keep apologising for the YouTube channel and the state of the YouTube channel. Um, so, for those not familiar, I'm doing a really, really really big video which I've been working on since October. It's approaching the end straight now, but even still, Jesus Christ. Uh, the video is about three hours long, and it's made, it's so I'm making it in four distinct chunks. I finished three of the chunks, you can find them linked below the stream. They're very work in progress, bear in mind, so there's lots I need to change or fix or add. I'm working on the fourth and final chunk. For the last two weeks, I was adding the visuals to it. This week, I'm just polishing. So I'm just, I'm just polishing it. I'm fixing errors. I'm balancing audio. I'm slotting in scenes that perhaps work a little better. So I'm hoping, this is me touching wood here, that by Friday, I can deliver it to you. That I can add it to the links below. And then you've got the complete video, at least in chunks. Of course, after that, it's a case of making it YouTube worthy by assembling the chunks and doing more polishing and inserting the scenes that I've definitely skipped. Um, so again, I can only continue to apologize for my glacial pace. Um, but yeah, so last night I was up till quite late. I'm quite tired. Um, I was re-recording a bit. I, I, I went on like a five minute rant and I watched it in the QA and I'm like, no, no, just shorten it to two sentences. This is two sentences. So I re-recorded those two sentences, but it I, I've, I've kind of made it worse. Not made it worse, but I've got um Basically, I need to re-record some following segments because they can't like the visuals rely on some stickers that I put it. I I I started adding some yellow stickers to the board, and they're in the background in like a the follow-up footage for about the next ten minutes. So I've got to redo those scenes. 
<sighs> oh, the dog's gone. Where's she gone? Oh, she's discovered that the radiator is switched on. Uh, how, it, sorry, how are you, Chad? How is everyone? Oh. No, no, it's actually it's getting shorter, Pat, Patat Zero. But uh, three hours is roughly roughly how long it'll be. Um, yeah. You've not watched two, three, and four, but you demand that I add the segment where I don't recognise Timmy. <laughs> Well, I, I haven't added that segment, but I did add the segment where I said that he wasn't much of a looker. He's a bit, uh, he is. Okay. Thank you, Ollie, and Graffinator, and Smokey Bear, and the McBain, and Asunda. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you sincerely. Right, so, the plan this morning, play a bit of this, and then I'm going to piss off and get on with the editing today. Sorry, these are meant to be trophies, Right. This guy is obsessed with fishing. If you walked into... Ladies, if you walked into a guy's... Like, if you were dating a dude, and you walked into his huge pad, and you're like, oh, wow. And then you discover that the walls are just covered in fish. What would your reaction... Zam, what would your reaction be? Your unfiltered, immediate head reaction. Would you think, oh, wow, he is dedicated to his hobby. Or would you run a fucking mile, lest your head end up taxidermied on the wall as well? Whoopsie. You too, Ilsa. <clears throat> in uh, Ilsa, I'm ge I'm actually gonna um, I'm gonna point out what you've done in the video. By the way, I was gonna pause the video and be like, "Thanks, Ilsa." For those not familiar, Ilsa drew a butt on the art that she she hit a butt in in the artwork that she gave me. Zam's reaction would have been, "I've been out crazied." <laughs> Are there other rooms? So there's like a, there's like a couple of rooms side by side. Or have I gone in a circle? Hang on. Is it just symmetrical? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, they've just duplicated the room. Okay. So I wonder what these are then. Maybe they're like trophies when you win tournaments and shit. Okay. The frame rate's a bit skippy. Okay. Right, so let's go fishing. Here I go then. So, exit location. Hmm. So also, this and polish at a time when they should be focusing on feature set, then they're doing it wrong. But regardless, it is very janky. Okay. What's F3? Uh, oh, I see. Those are like daily quests. Ugh. Yuck. Dailies. Okay. Uh, I don't know, Phoenix, but r regardless, it's, it's the second point that concerns me more, is that even if I did spend ages paying off the mortgage on a large house, it, it would be a large house, and without trying to sound like too much of a doomer, I have no plans of getting a family or kids or anything, so it really would be me having to, you know, keep a large house clean. I'd never be able to do it, especially if I eventually get a different job and, uh, you know... It'd be a pain in the ass. Okay. Anyway. Hope everyone's okay. Um, yeah, so sorry. For those just joining then, uh, what I'm doing is I'm working on this large video. I, I need to polish it. I need to, uh, yeah, I need to polish the thing and, and get it ready, hopefully by Friday. Touching wood. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi there, social. ZF Social is in the chat, everybody. Hi there, indeed. Social says, I'm a fire hose today. You are? Are you okay? You feeling unwell? Hang on. Woo! Laggy. Holy shit. Oh, of course, it's because my hook length is super long. Um, right. So, let's cast. In fact, tell you what I'm going to do first. Let me just get the spinner. Okay. So, I'm just going to cast this. It's just a, a spinning lure. The only reason I'm doing that. Hang on. Where am I exactly? Oops, too shallow. Hang on. So I'm here on this side of the lake. Does it show me which way the wind is blowing? Cloudy, temperature 18 degrees, so that's good for feeding. So the water temperature is probably 12-ish. Hang on, what does it say there? Mono, strength, straight. No, knowing where the wind is blowing would be useful. Let's hang on, just try over here for a second. Let me just reel that in. Mm 
<laughs> I was just going to use the spinner as a as a plumbing weight. Oh, okay, hang on. Is that is that flowing? Because carp don't really like flowing water. Oh, hang on. This might be all right. Yeah, let's have a look at the depth. Hang on. So, me too, flute. Actually, yeah, me too. I rather enjoyed the aisle. Okay, so looking at the depth. So normally, so in order to determine the, the depth of the lake, you would use a float and what's called a plumbing weight, which is just a, a, a weight that's small and smooth and uh, is able to pull the float under. <coughs> so you adjust the float up and down the line. Uh, and if the, if the float gets pulled under when you cast, then you need more slack. If the float lies sideways on the surface, then you need to tighten it, tighten it up. Eventually, with enough adjustment, you can, when the float is bobbing, you've got the depth correctly. So you can determine how deep the lake is. Why? Because you want your bait presentation to be near the bottom of the lake because carp are bottom feeders. They don't, gen well, they, they can feed higher up in the water layer, but their mouths face down. So... Your chances of catching carp are greatly increased if you... Have I just caught a fish? No. What's got... Oh, the line isn't taut. That's why. Okay. So how deep is that? So according to the stat there, it is... Uh, only a couple of meters, I think. Yeah, two meters there. So one second. So what one would do before they start fishing on any given venue is that they would start plumbing the depth to try to, to determine any water features. So that's two meters. Pull it over here. Because you want to find a nice silty bottom where it's quite deep. 1.5. Okay, still quite deep. 167. Now it's... There we go. Okay, it gets very shallow all of a sudden. So it looks like there's a central channel. Okay. So it was around two meters, wasn't it? So let's go here. So there's my bait, middle mouse, the mouse wheel. Let's go down to 2.3 meters on the hook length. So the length beneath the float, okay? And then, what have I, What bait have I got here? It's an earthworm, okay? And I've got uh, a six size 16 hook, which is frankly a little bit small. Uh, sorry, Von, Von Worsington is shown on the right side of the screen, the bottom right side of the screen, the depth and the distance uh, that I've cast there. So if you're angling normally, you would just use a plumbing weight and intuition. Uh, some people even actually, um, they put little little markers on their line to indicate exactly how much uh, they've cast out. Or alternatively, they could just remember by the fact that turning the reel, so turning the handle, will bring in, say, like 0 0.9 meters of, uh, of, your, uh, of, your, of your main line. I did remember how, uh, what my reels did at one point, but I've long since forgotten. Here we go. Okay, so there we go. My bait is at the bottom, which is excellent. Now what you're looking for is if the float goes under, then a fish has grabbed it immediately. I can't actually see the float. Can you see the float? Ah, is it bobbing on the side? Oh, hello. There we go. Fish has grabbed it. Strike. Okay, let's start reeling it in. Yeah, it feels kind of like probably a roach. Yeah, it's probably a roach. Just a little nuisance fish. Oh, no, it's a perch. Hello. Come on. Up you go. Okay. Oh, it's a new record. You're no wait. Sorry, doesn't that normally happen when it's a new record holding it? Guess not. Okay, that's a fairly respectable perch. Two point four nine pounder. Yeah, pretty nice thing. So again, a shoaling predatory fish. Uh, I've caught them quite easily on spam. Um, yeah, very nice fish. I've always appreciated the look of perch. Apparently, they make they make uh, they're good to eat. Apparently. Okay. Sorry, yeah, Lulu's bogged off. There's not really anything to see. Let's keep it for the cash. Don't know why we're keeping it. Normally you get thrown off, thrown off a fishery if you do that. Okay. Right. So earthworms catch perch. Let's see if we can switch over to equipment. So size 16. Let's go up to a size 12. Okay. So a size 12 hook. They're further behind me now. I had my fishing uh, box open behind me. I might open it in a minute. Um, go to a, a ball of dough. So a boily, essentially. Almost certainly we'll get a carp with this. Or maybe a bream. They go for the same type of bait. Uh, 
Okay, how's my float presentation? Probably not good. I think I need a brighter float. Yeah, it's on its side. Oh, hello. Strike. Regardless. There we go. <laughs> yeah, probably a bream feels kind of light. What have we got? It is a... Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a grass carp. Small one, though. Yeah, it is a carp, though. So in America, uh, well, this species, along with others, are known as the Asian carp, which apparently is an Americanization. It's a, it's a, t it's a, it's sort of catch-all term for just the carp. So grass carp, common carp, mirror carp, silver carp, something called a blackhead carp or something. Don't know what that is. Hmm. Uh, keep it again. Sell it. Cash. Use it to buy more gear. Okay. Let me just uh, go and make the hook length a bit shallower then, so to two meters. So it's just above the surface. Uh, Urka Prince, I'm an, I, well, I just love angling. I can't wait to get out again on the lake and go fishing. Yeah, I definitely need a brighter float. Uh, I've been playing with my fishing gear behind me. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Mm hmm. So obviously you won't be, yeah, going real fishing, you won't be getting bites this quick. Probably will be waiting some time. Well, it depends how much of a feeding frenzy is going on. Okay, that looks to me like a, that's a, what is that, sorry? An immature carp? Uh, that is a, ah, it's a crucian carp. New personal record, 2.58 pounder, 45.2 centimetre. Uh, they look really big for... I, I thought a crucian is meant to have a teeny-weeny head. Looks more like a goldfish. That looks way more like a common carp to my eyes. But again, I've never really caught a crucian. Uh, they're not stocked in the lakes that I go to, so... Hmm. Again, keep it for the sale. Open fishing net. Let's have a look. So European perch. So $4.1. Don't know why it's in dollars. We're in Europe. No one can use dollars. $9.4 for a grass carp, sell it. $3.8 for that crucian carp. Again, sell it. Build up the cash. Uh, not Ferdinand. Friday, I think. We're doing armor on Friday. We're doing Mike Force on the regular. Okay. So you're getting some good carp. Uh, we can definitely go bigger, can't we? Let's see if we can go bigger. So let's go with equipment. Uh, so which loadout is this? Oh, yeah, go for the bottom feed. It. Well, I could go ledgering. Yeah, get a size 12 hook. No, no, don't delete it. Okay, so slight difference. Instead of using the float, we're going to do something called ledgering, which is where you weigh it all down against the bottom of the lake, gunning, gunning for bottom feeding fish, essentially. There we go. So there's a, a, a cage feeder there. Hang on. moving unnaturally so normally that would be full of bait sprinkling it out and letting the little fish nibble and then hopefully a big fish will come along and be like "Ooh, there's a big chunk here oh. uh, one uh, one uh, good bait presentation method is to use something called a pop-up so you see the what well, that's actually a good example can you see the way that it's slightly above the surface that's because it's buoyant so you can have, uh, well, there, there are different ways of doing pop-up boilies. Some people literally put a, pe a piece of buoyant foam inside. Oh, there we go. Uh, it looks really small. What is it? Uh, that is a barbel. Uh, again, I've never caught a barbel. Apparently a fairly large and easy to catch species. Uh, they are stocked in some UK lakes, but uh, yeah, I've not seen one. Okay. A fishing bullshittery pseudonym. Uh, no plan for that sort of thing. Although I did buy a GoPro camera, so when I ne when I next go fishing, I'll show you some of the uh, the fish that I catch. Okay. Keep that one. Can I get a larger hook then? Let's go to the shop. Okay. Hooks. Let's go with a rank fourteen bait hook. 
So what, have I, what am I now? I'm rank what? Rank 4, I think? Yeah, level 4. Give me a size 5, 6? Uh, give me a size 10. I like to use size 10s in real life. They're pretty good. So, um, hang on. Add to cart by now. Let me show you. One second. So this would be a size 10 in my hand now. Oh, is the packet open or closed? No, it's open. <laughs> so this is a size 10. So it's attached to uh, what's called a chod rig. So it's got like a, it's already pre pre tied and ready to go. So all I have to do is slide that onto my fishing line. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a fairly respectable hook. You're going to be catching carp on that. I I normally go for something between a size ten and like a size six, sometimes a size four. So the yeah, the the greater the number, the smaller the hook. Note that there's also so note that uh, what is that? That little um, that little loop there. So you can use that to sort of tie your bait on. So it's uh, it's sort of next to the hook, but the hook isn't buried in it. Hang on. So there's a little trick called a hair rig, which started to be prominent. And I, th I think it was on the 80s that it became common. Effectively, anglers discovered that if you exploit the suction effect that carp have when they feed, you can have a bait with absolutely no hook on it. The hook just sits nearby. T still tied on, of course, but it just sits near, right next to it, or even hidden beneath it. And the fish comes along, and it sees bait, which is clearly not tampered with, because it isn't. And it sucks it up, and the suction action pulls the hook into its lip. And apparently it was an absolute revolution. Uh, uh, anglers said they were getting incredible takes, because none of the fish were used to it. It was called a hair rig, because they were literally... Uh, was it horse hair, I think, initially? They were tied onto the line? Thank you, small boy, and ho hoo silver, and JJ Ramon. Thank you. Oh, there's no bait on there. A little bit ho hoo, a little bit. Uh, let's go with. Okay, I'm out of boilies. Let's go with. I have a quest, a reward. What is it? Sorry. Catch a fish of any weight that weighs uh, 1.10 pounds. <laughs> $90. Also, fish for seven minutes. Right. Is that Solvik? Hi there, Solvik. Hi there, indeed. I hope you're very well. Let's go to the shop. Let's go to the bait. What's available? Uh, so, dough. So, yeah, boilies. Prepare from flour, potato. Well, yeah, you can, you can make any sort of mix, really. I'm going to make my own. In fact, my brother's buying me like a... Like a, a, a chopping board where you can roll them, like with grooves in it. I get a couple of bags of this. Do I have any behind me that I can I can doing a show and tell at the same time? Hang on. Hang on a minute. So, on the end of that hook, tied onto a hair rig, would be boilies. These are boilies. Ta-da! So these ones are pineapple crush 12 millimeters. So crude protein, fats, crude fiber. So I presume just, yeah, just byproducts of some other food industry. All crushed up and then added, so pineapple flavoring has been added. 
I think the bright, well, obviously the bright colours let the carp see them in the water. What? See them in the water? I've dropped one somewhere. But the good part about, mm. the good part about that, <laughs> I swear the flavouring is just to attract some anglers. Mm. Um, namely me. But, um, yeah, so the good news about boilies is that because they are a solid shape, they resist nuisance nibble fish. So something like an earthworm or something, a uh, little roach are going to come along and they're going to take little bites out of it. But boilies resist that, so they stay on the hook. Uh, little fish will try to take a nibble, of course, but they won't get anything out of it. But then a big fish will come along and just go, hom, and eat the whole damn thing. Oh, I've done it again. I'm fucking thick. Hang on. Go to equipment, choose, add a boilie. There we go. Urka says, I love nibbling on some pineapple balls. <laughs> Don't eat the boilies. They've got egg whites in them. You're going to get salmonella. Okay. Oh, there we go. That was a carp. Either a crucian or a common. There we go. Woo! <laughs> the game is very janky. It's a crucian. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so carp goes straight for them. Do crucians have the downwards facing mouths? It doesn't look like it. They look a bit different. Okay. Oh, really, silver? Hang on. I'll give it a welly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Press and hold Q to just bring your reel straight back in if you fucked up. Seems to be moving a bit unnaturally. I think it's just the game being weird. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. So I also like to put the boilies inside a PVA bag, which is like a, a water dissolving sugar based uh, bag. So it wouldn't just be the hook bait, it would be... There we go. Oh, that was a bream. So it got scared off there. The bait presentation scared it off. So the speed that they're coming in is... is yeah, that's, that's not a very good simulation of what really happens in real life. Uh, what actually happens is they slowly cruise over the pile and they start sort of scooping it up into their mouths. And then they would... Uh, is it bugged out? game does feel very glitchy. Oh, hello. Oh, no, there we go. The bream grabbed it. Up the drag. There we go. So they come in really slowly. Oh, wow. Common bream. 3.96 pounder. Uh, they come in very slowly and they scoop up uh, like patches of food into their mouths and then they spit out the silt. Uh, so you, there are some excellent videos on YouTube, if you just want to Google it, of carp feeding underwater, and you'll see what they do. And then you can actually see some people have put cameras, and you can actually see the, the, them getting taken by, by the hook bait. And it's incredible footage. You're like, wow. Hmm. All right, keep that one. Right, so we've got ourselves a bream. I mean, the, the rod held. Let's see if we can get an even bigger hook. So that's a size 12. Oh, I didn't even put on the size 10. I'm fucking thick. Size 10. There we go. So bigger hook means that smaller fish physically can't get it in their mouths. So on a size 10, I would put in yeah, probably like a 12 millimeter boilie. I've got 20 millimeter boilies, but honestly, I get I get bites so rarely with them. I think they're too big. I think 20 mil boilies are a bit hmm. Okay. You're arguing with a friend and you need help. You're where from Manchester? <laughs> Manchester? No, no, no. Brighton, on the far south coast of the United Kingdom. Any further south and it would be in the sea? Any further south and I'd be French. There we go. Oh, that looks like a barbel, I think, maybe. Okay. Jeez. All this crazy spinning of the fish doesn't happen in real life. Okay, keep. 
Okay. It doesn't surprise me, Toby. My accent is extremely fr uh, common in the south of the UK. Uh, you're, li you're listening to an estuary accent, so around the London estuary. Uh, you'll have many people with a... Uh, yeah, it's just a very common accent. Uh, so it's not the sort of inner London Cockney, like London Tan, and it's not uh, the um, received pronunciation, which is really died. I mean, very few people have that accent these days. It's just a very all-round common accent. Thank you, Araxis. Thank you very much. Oh, there we go. Strike. Something got it. Something bigger. Dial down the drag. Oh, okay, this one's... Okay, this one's pretty chunky. So... So as it, re as it comes towards me, I reel in. As it goes away, I adjust the drag settings on the reel to tire it out as it's trying to pull line away. So one must be careful when you're fishing in real life because carp are a very powerful fish, very large, very muscular, and they're going to turn, especially as they're coming up to the surface, they're going to turn and bolt in the opposite direction. And if, you're, if you've done it right, your hook length should be slightly weaker than your main line. So if anything is going to break, it's just the hook length. And then all the all the fish has to do is just spit out the hook because the tension is gone and you, you don't have a barbed hook on a European fishery or a British fishery. Okay, I'm tiring it out now. But yeah, you, you need to be careful. So as it comes on in... It's going to bolt, so if you've tightened up your drag setting too much, it will just snap your line, and it's gone. Your objective is to use as, ooh, use as thin a line as possible. What is that? That looks like a common. That is a... Oh, yeah, so this is weird. I think it's a mistranslation. That is definitely a common carp. I don't know why it's called Sezen carp. I have a feeling the developer is not English... And it's just a mistranslation. But yes, the common carp. No one quite knows when they got into British waterways. We know it's, So we know that they were in the waters by around about the 14th century. But estimates are between, the I think, the, either the 12th to the 13th century, they managed to somehow get here to the UK, which is very fucking weird because they are originally from, like, Japan or Vietnam. They're in that sort of region. Pretty sure, pretty sure they're Japanese. Hang on. So, Regalia says Sazen means carp in Turkish. Ah, okay. So, um, no one's quite sure how they got into the UK waterways, but when they did, they proved to be a bit of a problem. They are a very powerful fish, uh, very muscular, very heavy set, and very aggressive. Uh, there's not much that can really take down. Well, there's, there's almost nothing in the UK, but like barring like a like a wolf or something back in the day that could really get an, an adult carp. Uh, so, starting off as juveniles, they had their predators, of course, but. Um, yeah, once they're adults, they live for 20 years and they, they're essentially... And they were very difficult to fish as well. And until the invention of modern modern fishing line, they would just break your line easily. Um, so like uh, extruded mono lines or whatever. Or braided lines. Anyway, so the point is, uh, they were in our waters in medieval times. No one's quite sure how. And then what's even weirder is that they started like variants of the common carp started to appear. So someone was breeding them. Uh, no, again, no one knows who. It's been lost to history. Uh, there are different variants of carp that are quite clearly artificially selected, notably the mirror carp, uh, which has enormous scales. Um, it's very, very strange. It's a, it's a very mysterious fish. Thank you, Humi Pula. Thank you very much, Humi. So, new personal record, 14.82 pounds, 53 centimetres. That is a very respectable carp. So my fish log says that my personal record for my best common is six point, sorry, 15 pounder. So this is a 14.82 pounder. Mm. So just shy of my personal best. Okay. Thank you, Dread Zone. Thank you. Ever been spearfishing? 
Uh, not really, Maxi. Uh, the, here in the, in the south of England, uh, carp fishing is typically done on fisheries, where it's a catch and release. Uh, if you attempt to kill one of the specimens, you'll get thrown off the property. Level five. Nice. Okay. How is the fish alive after being out of the water for so long? They can breathe oxygen with their mouths. It's one of the reasons that they're such a pain to deal with. Uh, in low oxygenated conditions, they will simply come to the surface in order to take gulps of air, which means that um, in sort of deep, muddy water, brackish water, where uh, the water quality is so poor, or even polluted water, where other, f other species are failing to survive, there will still be common carp. They're a bit of a nightmare in that regard. And that's one of the reasons they're such a pain, because they're just incredibly powerful, resilient, long-lived, and... Um, yeah, just adaptive. Is what true, Zoob? Which which part? As in them breathing air? No, no, they do. They come to the surface to gulp. Apparently. Uh, that's what I read. Thank you, lollipop. Green lollipop. Okay. In fact, apparently it was one of the like one of the warning signs when there's polluted water. You see carp come to the surface and they start gulping air, which is an indication that there's something wrong with the waterway. Oh, ripples over there. So when you first arrive onto a lake, one should take a few moments to have a look around and see if they can see any disturbances, any ripples, any bubbles, which could indicate feeding. So carp being a bottom feeding fish... Oh, something's trying to go for it, but it's getting spooked. So carp being bottom feeders will uh, start sifting through, looking for insects and larva, larva, larva even, and eggs and that sort of thing. There we go. So as they're doing that, doing that, they're um, they're continually. Oh, hello, my reel is going to break if I'm not careful. They're making bubbles. They're making the water murky. They're bumping reeds. So one should be careful and look for signs of feeding. In addition, as they eat uh, things with shells, so mollusks and stuff, uh, they'll need to dislodge those from their from their um, what are they called? Is it pharyngeal teeth? They've got like teeth in, in the back of their throats. So whenever things get stuck or whenever they need to reset their swim bladders, it's not entirely clear, they'll jump out of the water and splash down. It's quite spectacular. So it, when you arrive at a lake, spend a few minutes going around its edge and just try to have a... Just see what the lake is doing. Sorry, pharyngeal plate, I meant to say. Basically, they don't have teeth at the front of their mouths. So a, fi a carp is not going to bite you. The chewing action happens way further back. Don't worry about it. So yeah, spend a few minutes going around the lake, seeing what you can see. Or oh, is that a tench? Uh, yo, wonderful. It's a tench. I love tench. A very nervous species. I'm surprised I caught that on a boilie. Normally, they love maggots. Hmm. 6.3 pounder tench. That's way larger than any tench I've ever caught. Yeah. But yes, um, yeah, the tench is um, a bit of a yeah, a bit of a slimy fish, uh, and it, uh, it it's very skittish, so it, uh, it it tends to be quite a challenge to catch. Uh, they're not like bream or roach, which just bite everything. They tend to hang around in vegetation, and therefore, yeah, getting them, I, I think they're quite pretty. And uh, getting them is quite a bit of a, a nice, fun challenge. So three pounds is about... Th uh, sorry, six pounds is about three kilos? I'm not sure, sorry. So at one point, I was just uh, saying, as, as in going with kilograms. But I'm going to be honest with you. Everything in the in the UK fishing scene is in pounds. So it's very confusing. So I just started getting used to just saying everything with pounds. As in 10 pound line, you know, seven pound hook length or whatever. 
Not really, Rick. Again, um, so here in the UK, or at least where I go in the south of the UK, the carp fishing is done on fisheries that are all privately owned. So it's all catch and release. I've yet to see a location where the carp are being killed because it's all privately run. And even still, I seriously doubt that any angler would want to kill a carp to eat it when they're not a very prized food fish here in the UK. And frankly, if you, if you get it back in the waterway, then it can grow bigger. Carp anglers are way more interested in catching bigger carp than they are eat it, eating them. But that being said, I mean, there's plenty of, uh, like, uh, beach uh, angling going on. I went to the beach this weekend with Lulu. I, I saw people with their beach casters. I'm sure they eat them. Flatfish and the like. Maybe shoals of mackerel. I don't think, I really, I, I don't think I've really got the gear to go. I could give it an attempt, but I don't think I've got the gear to go beach casting. Plus, all the salt water is probably going to fuck up all my gear. So what I'm doing here is actually uh, just out of pure habit. This is more like a this is more like a method feeding method, uh, like a technique. So I was holding my rod to the side. So a method feeder uses something called a quiver tip, which is where the third segment of your rod is um, super sensitive. It bends really easily. Uh, I've got two different quiver tips on my rod. One is a one ounce, whoopsie, one ounce, and the other is 1.5. So they really don't take much weight in order to make them go bloop. So using a quiver tip and holding your rod sideways, you can see exactly what's going on with your bait. Hello, bream. Ooh, nice bream. Ooh, new, new record. So 5.74 pounder bream. That's a nice bream. Mm, okay. Let's keep it for the, both the experience and the cash. Okay. Sorry, what was I saying? So yes, I would hold my rod sideways like this and then watch the, watch the quiver tip carefully. So the quiver tip is also covered in like a fluorescent coating so you can see it bend. Um, yeah. Hippolis Cage says, I have a quiver tip too. I really hope we're still talking about fishing. Okay. So, let's have a look at the reel. Oh, new skills. Let's have a look. So, what's this? Dodger. Attractive uh, competitor. Increases lure effectiveness. Fish in aquarium grow faster. Oh, really? They grow? Can you sell them when they grow, maybe? Uh, cool. Buy a 5%. Increases the chance of being able to buy items at better prices. Also reduces the cost associated with gaining access to new fishing grounds. Coins. When you reach a new level, the amount of time that you earn extra coins is extended by 5%. Eh, go with this one. Buy a 5%. Yeah, increases the chances of being able to buy items at better prices. Okay. Uh, oh, no, wait. Oh, we need to unlock both skills. Okay. Claim... Okay, so, yeah. $25 there. Okay. Also, one second. Simply because I'm curious. Where is my order? I ordered a um, a gift for my brother. Hang on. Oh, what's this? Il Ilsa sent me some art. <laughs> uh, fuck. Ilsa sent some art of me dumpster diving for pillows. It didn't happen like that. Ilsa... Kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally in the dumpster, grabbing pillows, screaming, recycling! Uh, thank you, Ilsa. Feel free to link it in the chat if you like. Sorry, I, I can't save it. Uh, my, my PC isn't uh, sterile, isn't, um, uh, isn't built for streaming. Hang on. Sorry, pardon me just one minute. Okay, uh, one minute. Where is my order? Where is my order? Let's have a look. So I ordered a really nice reel for my brother for his birthday. Uh, here we go. 
Shipment tracking details. It should be arriving today, you see. If it arrives midstream, then I'll show you it. Uh, parcel has departed from the retailer. Okay, so yeah, it's not out for delivery. Damn. Okay. Right. Let's go back one. Um, so, my reel... Sorry, why, I was just clearing my throat. Let's have a look then. So that's my standard reel. 3.97 pound strength. Not sure what it means by reel strength. You don't really have a reel strength. Uh, stats when it comes to reels would be how much um, main line you can have on the spool. Uh, there would be different... Um, what is it? Uh, basically different... Um, like is it is it bearing settings for how how many turns of the the handle how many cranks of the handle will uh bring in like a meter of your main line uh you've got drag settings never seen i don't know what this means maybe it's a game thing hang on gear ratio thank you uh, sorry do some uh, i don't really have expensive reels do some of them have like changeable gear ratios can you up them and down them? Okay, that'd be kind of cool if you could. Small boy says you can. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go. I shouldn't go fucking shopping for expensive shit. Hang on. Rod supports items unavailable. Go to the shop. What's available? Let's have a look at my reels. So universal reels. So that's the one I've got. I own two apparently. Uh, oh. Since when did I get this one? Owned? Maybe that's the spinner one. New, what's that? Rank 3. 640. Bloody hell. Crazy irrational prices. Any news with the ants, Nero? Yeah, they seem to be doing well. Sorry, let me just pop their heating on. Hang on. There we go. So it's 16.9 degrees in the ant farms right now. So I've just put their heating mat on. I've got a little thermometer next to me. And then the temperature should go up to around 22 degrees. So it hovers between 22 to 25 degrees. Yeah. So the ants, the ant, the queen ant and her brood should be nice and toasty. Okay. Uh, sorry, what was I doing? So I can't afford it right now. Let's have a look at the fish that I've caught. Can I sell any of them for cash? So sell the barbel. Yeah, just sell them all, frankly. There we go. Common bream for 6.17. 9.08. Ooh. Says in carp for 43.68. Hmm. Okay. 665. Cool. Go back to the shop. How much of, How much was that reel? Ooh, okay. 640. Maybe we should get it. Ah, it's a it's a double double levered. I've never I've never got one of those before. Oh, it's completely different, isn't it? Ah, what are these called again? Are they called bait caster? So that's a very different mechanism that I'm really not familiar with. Is that like a boat thing? What what's that for? Hang on. Uh, yes, I think they're called bait caster reels. What are they for? Fishing reel. Here we go. Um, so normally I've got... Is it called a fixed spool? Where it spools around a central... Uh, like your central... Well, your spool of line, I guess. Hang on. Bait casters. Here we go. So the bait caster reel, or the bait caster, is a multiplying reel like a conventional reel, but with a lighter spool and a higher, more forwardly positioned line g line guide to facilitate further and smoother casting, hence the name. Oh, it's a long distance caster, is it? The bait caster reel is always mounted above the rod handle, uh, what is known as the casting rod, hence its other name given to it by New Zealand and Australian anglers, the overhead reel. The line is stored on a bearing support, more freely revolving spool that, sorry, bear, bearing supported, freely revolving spool that is geared so that a single revolution of the crank handle results in multiple, usually times four or more, revolutions of the spool. The bait casting reel design will operate well in a wide variety of fishing lines, with a wide variety, uh, from braided multifilament to heat fuse super lines, fluorocarbon and nylon mon monofill lines. Okay. 
What are the what are the pros and cons? Holy shit, that's huge. Okay, that's a crazy heavy big line. Uh, real. Okay. The older design, the more modern design. Okay, no, the more modern designs look smaller. Um... Why? Two variations of the revolving spool bait casting reel are the conventional surf fishing reel and the big game reel. Uh, oh, here we go. Advantages. So, while spin casting and spinning reels are easier to operate because fishing leaves uh, the spool free during the cast, bait casting reels have to potential have the potential to overrun. What does that mean? While spin casting and spinning reels are easier to operate because fishing lines leave the spool freely during a cast, bait casting reels have the potential to overrun. Uh, a casting issue in which the reel spool does not spin at a rate equal to the speed of the fishing line leaving the reel. Professional fishermen, however, prefer bait casters because the bait casting reel allows anglers more control over their cast. Uh, since a bait caster spool spins along the fishing line, leaving the reel, a simple flick of the thumb can stop the cast early or slow uh, a lure while it's still in the air. This grants anglers, such as bass fishermen, more accuracy in their casts. Furthermore, a bait caster's design allows a fisherman to make casts at a faster rate, even with heavier baits. Disadvantages. They're unsuitable for light lures. They're much more costly. Uh, one must know about the spool tension adjustment for different spool sizes. There are higher risks of getting backlashes during the cast without proper technique. And effective use of bait casting reels requires prior experience and the developed skill set. Thus, it's unsuitable for beginners. Hmm. Okay, so accuracy of casting and control, especially over longer ranges? I've never tried one. Though, frankly, I've, um... Mm, I mean, what's the maximum that I've ever cast to? Probably, like, at most 50 to 60 metres? Uh, to get, like, a distant island on, like a, like, a lake that I'm fishing on? I've never had to cast particularly far. And normally, it's way less. Normally, I'm casting 10 meters or less. Hmm. Okay. So let's... I mean, do I really need this? <laughs> Look at this. I don't need that for this. But, um... Go to the shop. Go to the reels. Universal reels, spinning reel, casting reel. I see. It's a separate... Sort my level. So there's no spinning reels available. So what's a cheaper universal reel? So that's, uh, yeah, that's much more akin of what I've got there. Hmm. It's lighter, suit for casting continually. Hmm. Where is that? Where's this barracuda? Because that's got a way... Yeah, that's got a way higher braking strength. I don't know what that's what's going on with that, with the reel. Go back to my gear, sorry. Equipment. Barracuda. There you are. So you're on my... How do I get you off? It's weird. Maybe I've got to replace you with another one. Hang on. Go back to the shop. Reels. These ones are free. Buy now. Okay. Equipment. Okay. Put the free one on there. Okay. Then back to my ledger and gear. Okay, here we go. Put on this barracuda. Nice. So I can tell just by looking at it that the dra so the drag setting is on the top there. So turning that wheel is going to, ti I think, tighten up the ball bearings in it to uh, basically increase the amount of effort to uh, uh, yeah, get the line off the, um, off the spool. One second. Sorry, I'm doing more show and tell.
So, what I've got in my hand here is one of the... I think this was the second reel that I bought, and unfortunately, I kind of regret it. Let me have a sh show of this. Hang on. So this, uh, a big pit, I believe these are called. So look at the size of this. Look at this. This is a this is a chunky fucking reel right here, right? So it's big and it's heavy, and it's good for putting on a on a carp rod. So a big, twelve footer carbon fiber carbon fiber carp rod. You'd mount this sucker. Big sucker. The disadvantage of this sort of thing, though, is that um, you're going to have trouble holding this for long periods of time. Hence why many people like to buy rod pods, which is basically just a frame that your rods sit on and it sort of dangles beneath it. Apparently, though, the advantage to this is a power in the cast. You can cast pretty far with this. And also, it's large sort of generous clearance between the parts means that it's good for beginners which is why i picked it up the reason i regret doing that though is that i should have well firstly the action for the drag as i just just described is at the top so tightening that up or loosening it is what determines the drag setting on the reel that sound so that's what happens when a fish grabs it tighten it up it takes way more effort to pull it loosen it see so the problem that I have is that because the action is on the top I'm, I'm often finding that when I'm playing the fish I, I don't know about other anglers but a big fat a, a big fat reel like that. I struggle to reach the damn thing. So I, I'm playing this carp and I'm playing with the dial at the top, taking my hand off the fucking uh, handle, and it's just it, I just find it a lot more awkward. What I really prefer is when the action is down here. So instead of having to go fuck like da da da, it's me just going like that. It's a, just a quick. The action is normally there. So for that reason, I, I do prefer getting reels where the dial is at the bottom so that I can very quickly and easily reach it uh, rather than at the top where I'm constantly having to fiddle with it. Um, also, there's another thing I regret about that reel is that the line clip on the side is actually really hard to use. So if you want to actually make your line stop at any given point, Sorry, got tangled. <clears throat> if you want to say, s s tell the line to just stop at a certain point, you see that clip? You would basically uh, pull the line underneath that little chevron. Like that. Hang on. So the line gets sort of held beneath that chevron. It's literally clipped on and it can't move further. So if, for example, you've cast your bait out exactly where you want it, you would clip the line, and that means that in the future, when you're, un well, you're casting, it will hit the clip and immediately come to a complete halt. But the problem is that chevron is really fiddly. And I think, like, three of my lines have little chevron or triangular clips, and I really struggle with them, especially in a pinch where... I've got to I've got to undo the clip, for example, because I've caught a fish and I don't want it breaking my line when it hits the clip. If it hits the clip, um, so it's really annoying. I'm not in touch. Yeah, I, I, I wish I knew that before I bought the reels. Unfortunately, mm, it is what it is. Sorry, sorry, um, Bevan. Sorry, I'm probably boring the fuck out of people. Hang on. Ugh. But yeah, the point is. Um, I, I bought these big, heavy set reels, which are totally inappropriate for the lengths that I fish at. I needed to go with smaller, lighter, uh, much easier to um, alter the drag setting on. That, yeah, this sort of thing that you, you pick up with experience. So I'm very tempted to, because now that I bought my brother a really nice one, maybe pick up a new one for me, maybe. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. So, uh, sorry, I've just switched over to this one. Okay, so I don't know what this means, or why it has a strength on the reel. Hmm. 
what's the current reel that I'm using. So the one that I really like, it's a bit cheap. It's called, um, I'll, I'll say the brand because fuck it. It's called the Fox EOS, I think it is. The Fox EOS Reel. Um, it's, I like it mainly because of the action. Well, as I described, the action's at the bottom. It's fairly inexpensive. I've got like several smaller spare spools for it, which are also really cheap. And um, what's the other thing? I it's, it's very light. It's really, really light. So I can hold it in my hand for a really long time. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay, so let's go with that then. Eleven pound line. All right. Is that it? Have I sold out? Is it too late for me? <laughs> oh dear. When's the giveaway? Yes, I'm giving away this broken landing net <laughs> that broke after trying to get like a five pound common last summer. It was 42 inches. It's bullshit. Ridiculously big landing net broke on such a teeny weeny common carp. Ugh. Hi, Quebec. Quebec, I'm boring my audience to tears. How are you? Okay. So, that is a dough boily. There's a fish in the background having a spaz attack. Oh, quickly. Woo! A barbel. Teeny weeny barbel. 1.81 pounds. Okay, let's keep this one. Right, let's maybe change the time of day and shimmy to a different location. So, right now we're on the edge of that river thing. Let's go back to the big one. Let's go... Let's go for the choke here. So, maybe we can get some action there. And also change the time of day. Well, I mean, morning feeding is normally quite good. Oh, it's the evening. Yeah, go for the morning. All right. Quebec says, I'm good, I'm mending. Good, good. I hope you're okay, man. Hope you feel better soon. Okay, here we go. Yeah, over here, uh, I'm just bogged down trying to get this YouTube video edited. How deep is that? So that's five, oh, wow. Nearly six meters deep. Straighten the reeds, though. That's a pretty bad bait presentation. Shimmy it. Whoa, too much shimmy. I've made it worse, haven't I? <laughs> um, but yeah, so over here editing. Uh, this week, going to go have a look at a bungalow. E uh, very eager to go fishing, as you can no doubt tell. Just need the UK to be a little bit warmer. Whoa, let's strike. Okay, up the... Tr so, yeah. Turn the dial. Oh, it's a very teeny weeny one. Uh, tench, maybe? Oh, yes, it's a teeny weeny tench. 1.83 uh, pounds. Still a respectable tench. 36 centimeters. Okay. Didn't expect a tench on a boily. Okay. Uh, our karma, they're just a captive audience right about now, frankly. <laughs> if they had something better to do, they'd already be doing it. <laughs> Uh, hope everyone's well. Right, uh, let's see if I can go with... Can I go with a bigger hook? Let's go with... Uh, shop hooks. Hmm. Let's go with a size... Sorry, what's an Aberdeen? Don't know, bait, I don't know what an Aberdeen hook is. Let's go with a size 6. I often use size sixes. Okay. Oh, um, everybody, my um. Oh, I didn't buy it. So you know that I said that I'm I'm on a. It's not it's not a it's not a diet. It's a it's a controlled calorie schedule thing. Um, I'm doing a really bad job of it, by the way. Yesterday was supposed to be uh, one of those days, so a five to two. So I eat normally five days a week, and then I fast, so only 500 uh, calories on, on two days a week. And it was meant to be on Friday and Monday, and I have hilariously failed on both of those days. <sighs> I'm not very good at it. I just get so hungry. I'm like, oh my god, I can't do it. I'm starved. I'm wasting away. No, not really. I, I I did have takeaway, but it was a salad. <laughs> I was like, 
Just order food. What should he order? A salad, that'd be fine, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to work. I might have to change the uh, the type of diet that I'm... Uh, not diet that I'm doing. Keep the line taut. Oh, there we go. Something's got it. There we go. Just going to keep trying to bolt, you see. So this is a size 6 hook now, so a smaller fish wouldn't be able to get this in its mouth. Careful, watch that line. Come on, lift that rod, pull it up to the surface. Whoa, careful. So again, when you're fishing, you need to make sure that you have a hook length, so the last few inches of the line uh, between your main line and the hook. You need to make sure that its breaking strength is just a little bit lesser. For example, if I'm fishing on a 10 pound main line, it's 10 pound breaking strength, I would have an 8 pound hook length. Because if something is going to break, it needs to be the hook length. So that the only thing the fish is left with in its mouth, because you know, <coughs> accidents happen. Sometimes you can just hook a fish that is way too big. Uh, the only thing that's left in its mouth is the hook and like 6 inches of line. And then because all the tension is gone on the hook, it will simply spit it out. There's no barb. It just slides out easily, spits it out, and it sinks to the floor. Uh, in addition, when people do ledgering, there's uh, something called a fixed rig, which is a definitely a no-no. A fixed rig basically means where the weight is tied on. Uh, they're often banned on many fisheries that I go to because what happens is if your main line breaks, potentially this poor bloody fish... Ooh, hello. Grass carp? Yeah, grass carp. Ooh, new record. 15 pounder. Nice. That is nice. I've never caught a grass carp. But 76 centimeter, 15 pounder. That is nice. Let's keep it. Um... So yes, uh, we call that a leader, says uh, the big re. Hook length sounds like the shaft length of the hook. That sounds very strange, because w as far as I know, we do, we do use the word leader, but at least in the terminology that I've read, uh, the big, we call leaders shock leaders. So where you have, so say for example, you're casting in something very heavy, the opening, say, two meters of line. So picture this in your mind, folks. You've got the, you've got the line, the rod here, you cast it overhead at high speed, but before the line starts coming off the rod, your the opening few meet like the opening meter has to absorb all of that weight spun over your head at great speed. So for this reason, you have a shock leader. So say for example, your main line for this bait that you're casting in, spotting, let's say your main line is thirty pounds. The shock leader would be fifty, just for the initial. The initial meter, just to e each that initial um, hit. And I know that you, you need a shock leader because I actually went to cast one time on a, I think it was a 20 pound, no, it was a 15 pound line with a 7 pound hook length. And I was an idiot and I tied a spod rocket, which is basically a plastic rocket full of heavy bait. I cast it overhead, a twang sound occurred. And I watched as my plastic rocket went bloop, and disappeared under the water. Oops. So yes, at least here, as far as I know, we call the yeah we call it a hook length as opposed to a, a leader because you, spe spe well specifically because there are shock leaders that are used for specific purposes. Anyway, sorry. Uh, long story short, I'm saying that. Um, you need to make sure that your hook length is slightly weaker than your main line so that it's the only thing that breaks. Now, you have fixed rigs, which is where the weight is tied on, and they're often a no-no on many fisheries because you don't want the poor situation where if your main line breaks, the poor fish is stuck with a hook in its mouth and the weight that it can't get rid of because it's tied on. Oh, hello. There we go. So a 20-year-old carp dragging around, e even if it's just like a three-ounce weight, I mean, that's a hell of a burden. You're stopping it from feeding. Oh. 
poor thing could die, you know? So, for this reason, anglers are encouraged, or even told to in the rules of the fishery, to use something called a running rig. I'll show you. Whoa, Jesus Christ. Oh, it's going to break. It's a biggie. Definitely a carp. Muscular. Heavy set fish here, folks. Oh. Come on, you carpy bastard. Oh. Come on. Get in the landing net. Carp do not give a fuck, everybody. Muscular fish. Powerful fish. There we go. What are you? Oh, you're a common. You're a common? You're a common. Yep, mistranslated. That's a common carp. 10 pounder. 10.9 pounder. Hmm. Very nice. Let me show you a running rig. Hang on. Sorry, just digging around in my tackle box behind me. Okay. That, that can't be. Oh, I'll keep that one for the cash. There we go. So, this, for example, would be what anglers would be told to use. So, there's the weight. I think this is around three ounces, right? But note that the main line goes straight through it. So, what happens is. Uh, so pretend that my main line is going through that, and then to the left side where that hole is, that's where a swivel is tied, so a little a little metal clip, and then after that is the hook. Now, in the event of something going wrong, in the event of the main line breaking, what happens? Well, the main line just slides out through this, and it drops to the bottom of the lake, and the fish is fine. Where, whereas if I'm using this and it's physically tied on, then the fish can't throw it. The fish can't get rid of it, and it's stuck. The poor bloody fish is stuck with this two ounce weight hanging from its lip. It's dangerous, could kill it. That's a big no-no. 20 year, 20 year old carp dying to that would suck. Uh, one second, what was the other thing I wanted to show you? Oh yeah, this is cool, look at this. And so on many lakes, it's a bit of a grey area. Some lakes allow it, some lakes don't. It really, you've got to ask the bailiff. Oh shit, I need a rubber. Hang on. So, have a look at this. Oops. So you know what I just showed you with that, that weight with the main line running through it? Sorry, I'm just tying this piece of tackle. Fuck. You know, most people, when they do show and tells, they have it ready. <laughs> Hang on. Right, so look at this. Oh, I've dropped the weight, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. So, this from before... So the main line goes threaded through the weight. Look at this. Same deal. But you see where my fingertips are? So the main line goes through this hollow lead clip. Or lead clip? Is it lead or lead clip? Basically a clip. It's like a plastic clip. And the idea is that it goes through that and the weight is, isn't is actually tied to the line. It's actually threaded through this. And that little um, tail rubber there, uh, well, that helps to stop the tangles. But also, in the event that something goes wrong, the fish is thrashing around. So um, imagine your main line has broken and it can't, it can't toss it. It can't get rid of it. That's a bad example. Hang on. I can't reach it without sticking my face in the camera. What happens is the fish is swimming around 
but now the weight isn't properly attached. It's only partially held on. So what it's going to do, it's going to keep flicking, flicking, flicking. Ah, come on, you little bastard. There we go. And the weight just falls off. It can slide off the clip because it's not on fully. It's only on partially. So the weight slides down. It's a safety bolt rig. So it still functions perfectly well if you want to catch the fish. But if the fish thrashes hard enough, it can kick the weight off. Because, yeah, of that teeny weeny plastic clip, which isn't, see, there's a, there's a gap. Safety bolt rig. But yeah. Yes, indeed, Arkama. It's an intentional design flaw. And I, I've even cut little, little grooves in my tail rubbers here to make it easier for the fish to kick it off. See? So normally they don't have those, but each of my tail rubbers, I'm just following in like a YouTube tutorial that I saw. Just like cut little, yeah. Why not tie it on ahead of your breakaway? That way you don't lose any tackle. Because the priority isn't losing tackle. Tackle is cheap. Tackle costs pennies. The carp, the, the lives of the carp are more important to the fisheries. For, again, a carp can live for 20 years and grow massive. Be a shame if one were to die just because some pillock doesn't want to lose a 50 pence weight, you know? Indeed, M.G. Wilson. In fact, many fisheries around the UK are extremely proud of their fish stocks. Again, Google a 20-year-old common carp and you will very quickly see what the fuss is about. You will very quickly see what the fuss is about. Imagine losing one of those to some idiot who just used a fixed rig and a barbed hook. Oh, there we go. Because of some bell end got cheap and he didn't want to lose 50 pence. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's a really big one! Oh, that's a really... This is a... Oh! That was a really big one. God damn, this isn't even the telescopic rod. Bloody hell. That was a biggie. Also, I've never seen that, by the way. 7.72 pounder. That was a big one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, again, we've just seen why a hook length needs to be weaker than the main line. Well, uh, yeah, normally a rod doesn't break, but... That was a big one. That was a very big one. Do I recommend the game? Maybe. Duke, it is very glitchy. Haven't really played it enough, to be honest. Okay. Sorry, I'm babbling this morning. Yeah, that was a man in a scoot with a scuba tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yesterday, Quebec, I was explaining that I did actually catch another, another angler one time. Our lines got caught. He cast onto my line, and of course my buzzers went off. And then his buzzers went off. And the two of us were like trying to reel in a fish before we realised we were just reeling in each other. And we both had a good laugh about it. And he was like, what should I do? And I, I was like, just, 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 cut off, just, just cut off my line, pull it into your, your jetty, and I'll come around. So I just wandered around the, the, the bank to go and retrieve my terminal tackle. <laughs> yes, if it weren't like a big burly bloke, it would have been romantic. Hang on. Oh, what's this? <laughs> this is like the, the way that it deals with the fish, just swinging them around your head. Normally, you, you carefully put them in a landing net. Common carp, 6.69 pounder. Nice. Let's keep it. So how much for a new rod then? Hang on. So the Feeder Master, universal rod. Let's have go to the shop. Universal... Float rods, spinning, casting feeders. When it says feeder, does it mean a method feeder? What's that about? Like quiver tip? Spinning rods. 
length float rods universal rods okay so there's a level three float rod there i could afford that actually three meter so it's almost yeah 15 pounder strength let's go with this by now okay tougher rod then so we're going from a 7.72 pounder to a 14.19 pounder okay does it have cork on the handle oh it does i love cork handles yeah they're nice wait what have i got on the end there uh nothing no bait at all oh wait uh oh no must it be a float rod am i forced to now this was meant to be my oh okay never mind so go to yeah switch over to the float rod uh river yeah, stick with that float go to a size six hook and a boilie okay how deep do you reckon well it was like five meters or something what the fuck what's going on wrong setup there we go Thank you, Captain Karik. Thank you very much, Captain Karik. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, I've only got 50 centimeters hook length there. Just reel that in. I'll hold down Q and just do it quick. There we go. Uh, let's put it down to a meter. There we go. Oh, hang on a second. Go. Cool. Eh, no, it's still too shallow. I've got a really deep part of the lake here. Um, this is like a ledgering section, isn't it? Hang on. Hmm. Oh, there we go. It's already done. I'm thick. Hang on. Cancel. Hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be working very well. Thank you, Coated Nose. Thank you very much, Coated. Oh, there we go. Need to find a shallower bit. Near the reeds over here. Yeah, yeah. This is good. Go there. Uh, Farmer. I've seen Quebec play it. Not tried it myself, though. Okay. I do enjoy float fishing, more so than ledgering, frankly. Sometimes when I'm ledgering, that is to say, when the... Whoa, whoa, okay then, hello. Whoa, okay, that's definitely a carp. Ease up. Ease up on the line. Okay, it's on the edge of the breaking strain for the line there. Um, sometimes when I'm ledgering, it does feel like I'm just letting the, the buzzers fish for me, you know? I do, I do enjoy having the fishing rod in my hand... Oh, this one's a biggie. Come on. So this is a boilie on a hair rig beneath a float in the midwater, I think. Fairly near the reeds. This one was hanging out in the reeds. Protection from birds. Indeed, Nick Puss. I love it. I love I love angling. Used to love it when I was a teenager, but I was well. It's all very expensive, and I was completely priced out of the hobby. So, um, a couple of years ago, I realised that I'm really spending too much time just cooped up in this flat, staring at a computer. So I was like, I should take up fishing again to smell the roses, you know. So thank you, folks. So I bought some. I bought uh, like a, 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 a new rod. Oh yeah, uh, I quickly discovered that teenage me knew nothing about fishing. Hell, I would argue that even 36-year-old me is still learning. There's still so much that I need to learn. So many new techniques to learn. So many new tricks. So many new species to catch, you know? Indeed, Azenko. My 40s are way closer than I'd like. 
<laughs> way, way closer than I'd like. Oh, fuck. No, never tried fly fishing, lazy. There must be venues somewhere in the UK. Like a river or some shit. Thank you, Just Ethendor. Thank you very much, Just. Come on, you little bugger. Dally, uh, Dally Ponkin is turning 40 this year. Good luck, Dally. I'm sure I'll be there soon. Thank you, Ben Bradford. Thank you very much, Ben. Whoa, that's a uh, common. Hello, big common carp. Nine. Yeah, so again, mistranslation. 9.37. It felt bigger than a 9.37. Okay, 45 centimeter, 9.37 common carp. So the bottom feeding common carp, again, invasive. Note the uh, the sensitive barbels on the front of its mouth there. So as it sifts through the silt in order to find pretty much everything, eats everything. Uh, fish eggs, insect eggs, insect larva, um, whatever it can find really. Very, very generalist feeder is the carp. Um, on warmer days, they tend to they come up to the surface on many fisheries and start cruising, looking for stuff that might have fallen into the water. So especially the big ones. Uh, that's often how you get the big ones, because they don't give a shit about predators, because there's pretty much nothing that's going to take a large carp. Um, yeah. Even, like, large predatory birds are going <laughs> to... Good luck with that, you know? Okay. Cool. What about pike? Yeah, the pike isn't taking a large carp. <laughs> In fact, the large carp is probably going to seriously fuck up just just by thrashing around. Yeah. Would fuck up the pike. Hmm. Thank you, Zrupa. Thank you very much, Zrupa. Pull this a bit closer, hang on. Oh, hooked on the ground. Whoops. So normally that's an embarrassing snag moment where I've got to try and get it unsnagged. And if you fail, try and trek around the edge of the lake. And if you fail, then you cut the main line as close to the float as you can. Hi there, Beatrix Blue. Oh, hi there indeed, Beatrix. Something grabbed it. Or Beatrice Blue, even. Hello, you are a grass carp. Hello, grass carp. Dial down that drag. It's going to break my main line. Dial down the drag. Come on. Come on. You want to come this way. So carp have very, very leathery, thick mouths. Obviously, they're, they're built to bottom feed, and they'll get plenty of snails and other creatures with sharp shells or stones. So a teeny weeny hook, especially a barbless hook, is not going to do much. Especially if you strike quickly. Unfortunately, from time to time, accidents do happen. And perhaps the fish will swallow the hook. In which case, we have a tool in our arsenal called the, the degorger. It's like a plastic pen. And it's got a groove. Fuck, hang on. Where's he gone? It's essentially a, like a very... Fuck, fuck. It's a very thin, like, plastic pen that can slide down the line. And the event, in the event of a carp swallowing the hook, you would slide it all the way down into its belly and just put pressure on the tip of the hook and it just comes free. In addition, most anglers are strongly encouraged to carry forceps, if not outright stated in, in the rules on many fisheries. So medical forceps, basically like, like a very, very thin set of um, medical pliers, imagine. And many of them are hooked nose, so you can actually reach down into the mouth of the carp and still see what the fuck you're doing. Uh, I've got like three of them. I've got three different sets of forceps. What happens if the fish straight up dies? Um, I presume you'd probably tell the bailiff. That's what I would do at least. I'd probably just wave the bailiff over. So on most fisheries, like, you'd be fishing now, and then, say, once every couple of hours or so, a gentleman would come round, 
Just to make sure that everyone's paid their day ticket. Just have a friendly chat. It's normally just very friendly. The guy comes over. At which point I'd probably say, I'm very sorry, but I don't know how this happened. This one seems to have died. But it's never happened. Woo, hello. Hello, grass carp. Woo, you're a big boy. 13.05 pounder. Yeah. Uh, Cornered says, I carry forceps because here in upstate New York, there's lots of fish with pointy teeth. Yeah? Do the bass have pointy teeth? Hmm. Have I bought a fishing drone? No. And do you know what? I thought it was ridiculous. I thought no one would use fishing drones, right? Pretty much every fucking time I've gone fishing, someone on the lake has a drone. Like, they are way more common than I thought. Way, way more common than I thought. I thought it would be like a stupid rich thing. Like, oh, rich people would have it. But seriously. But then here's the, here's the crazy part. I'm fishing... And then uh, on some venues, hang on, Ooh, level six, on some venues, the dirt road stretches around the lake for convenience. So what people will do is that they'll drive their cars around the edge of the lake and then they'll pull up like uh, on a little sort of like siding over there and then they'd wheel their stuff down to the lake, right? So you can you can often see people's vehicles, just like the, the tops of people's vehicles as they're parked around the lake, okay? And I would do the same. My Lamborghini would be over here. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so I would look around the lake and I would see truck, truck, uh, like van, 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 van. Uh, I'd read the side of them. Plumber, bricklayer, plumber, um, like roofing expert or something. Tradesmen. They're always tradesmen. And then I realize why. It's because they've got such dis disposable income. All the money's in the fucking tradesmen, isn't it? All these, yeah. All these people charging crazy prices for the skills that only they possess. Of course, they're the ones that can afford the expensive drones and shit. Like, literally, last time I went to um, a carp lake that, I, that I, I don't really go to it much anymore, the guy next to me had this huge tent. He was clearly there for the entire week. I was just having a chat with him. He was a bricklayer. Hang on. Oh, that's too far. Hooked on the ground. Pull it towards me. Whoopsie doodle. Okay. Captain Speedy says, I do a freshwater fishing for salmon. It's a lot of fun. More hard to catch. Cool. Hello. You look like a common carp, maybe? Coming to investigate the boily? Uh, yoink! A <laughs> mirror. Was that a mirror? Was that a common or a mirror? That looked a lot like a mirror. I haven't caught a mirror yet. I'd love to see one. Dial down the drag. Don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. Oh my god, it's a mirror. Holy shit, it's a mirror. It's a mirror carp, everybody. Okay. So there are two common variants of the carp in the UK. The common carp and the mirror carp. The mirror carp is even more mysterious than the common. No one knows how the fuck the common carp got into UK waters. It's been lost to history. They arrived at some point between the 12th to 13th century. That's all we know. But the mirror carp is even more perplexing because all of a sudden, basically someone was breeding carp. Breeding them to have fewer scales. Presumably so that they could be easily descaled for eating. And then obviously they managed to escape into the wild. At least that's the assumption. Again, no one knows who the fuck did it. The assumption is maybe monasteries did it. Whoa. Venom says I did it. <laughs> so you'll notice in, uh, immediately, you know the common carp that I keep catching? They're covered in scales. Tough scales. You'll notice the difference immediately if I land it. You'll be like, oh, I see. 
They've been bred to have enormous large disc-shaped scales like mirrors. Hence, mirror carp. Come on. So my personal best, I believe, is actually a mirror. Come on, you little bastard. Again, common carp are tough. Whoa! With a lot of stamina, and they do not give a shit. They'll pull you into reeds, they'll pull you into the jetty. Come on, you little bastard. Come on. Come on. Also, in real life, if you pull it to the sur to the surface, it was it's probably going to bolt. So you've got to be, be be ready with your drag settings. The moment it comes up to the surface, it's going to just go in the opposite direction or whatever. No, I've never caught a pike in real life. Um, Aride. Ar they are in the lakes that I go to, but I've never landed one, never caught one. So there's this one lake that I went to a couple of years ago. Um, and um, I went on a day where there was a storm. Oh, it, it was either starting or finishing. I remember there was lightning in the distance. And there was this enormous pylon. And it kind of scared me because I was like, there's this huge pylon right there. And I spoke to the bailiff briefly. I was like, is this safe? And he's like, surprisingly, yes. He actually says, you want to be as close to the pylon as possible because it's got like grounded like lightning what is it? Lightning rods on it. All pylons do. So he said, there's, weirdly, the safest place is actually nearer the electrical pylon. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, casting, living in fear of don't cast too high. <laughs> Unless you want a bit of a shock. Oh my god, this mirror does not give a shit. I can't really put my drag setting higher than 66%. Oh, dial. Anyway, for those joining, uh, once again, sorry for the state of the YouTube channel. Um, I didn't mean to make so few videos last year. In October, I started a video essay on a game called The Forest, and it's about three hours long, and I'm still working on it. I've managed to complete about three hours of footage, of course, but um, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to polish the sucker. Beneath the stream, so I've done it in four chunks, you see. I've made three of those chunks, and you can find them below the stream. But I'm just trying to work on the fourth one. I'm hoping to have it ready by Friday. I really hope, at least. Of course, I've still got to then assemble the whole damn thing and get it ready for YouTube itself. But at least you'll have... Well... At least you'll have the video... Below the stream. I hope so, Mukbang. Thinking about it, the release of The Forest 2 before this video would be kind of useful. Not just for the sake of putting it on everyone's radar, but also because I'm hoping that The Forest 2 doesn't do what I'm talking about, so that people will see the contrast and be like, ah. It could go either way. Oh my god, this, this fish does not want to give up. You see what the reviews mean when you say that stamina's broken in the game. Do you reckon? Yeah, this fish would have tired by now, definitely. Do you reckon it's just bugged out? Thank you, Black T07. Thank you very much, Black. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. This common carp would have been exhausted by now. Okay. Well, I don't agree, Master. If, forgive me, I, I regularly put on videos on YouTube that are hours long. 
folding ideas, fucking that Doctor Who, like, enormous essay. I watched, like, a three-hour video on an Evermore theme park in Utah, America. I, 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 yeah, I think people are more than happy to just put on the same video for, as background noise for hours. Okay. Fuck me. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just broken. Maybe maybe I'm looking at a a, a bug's game mechanic. Thank you, pot friend. Thank you very much, pot friend. Come on. There we go. Bit closer, mate. Because, yeah, normally this carp would be completely exhausted. And you start be able to, being able to guide it in a certain direction towards you. Here we go. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hello, mirror carp. Whoa. Oh. Okay, it looks distinctly different from... Look, it's a... <laughs> I think they've repainted the common carp model, haven't they? You can literally see the scales. But yeah, look at the huge disc scales up here. Yeah, this is a mirror carp, everybody. So someone made a an attempt at selectively breeding a carp that was presumably easier to descale, but the result are these huge shiny scales on it. Whereas the rest of it is scaleless. Hmm. Not bad. Twent Ooh. Okay. 29.8 pounds. That is a big boy. That is probably eight to nine years old? Maybe? Hi, Novi. Hi there indeed. Yeah. So my personal best, everybody, in real life is a 69 centimeter long. This one's 68. And it's a 17.4 pounder. This is 29. Oof. Way bigger than my personal best. Okay. Keep it. It's worth quite a bit of cash. Could put it in the aquarium. Let's keep it and put it in the aquarium. Okay. So what's the time? I need to go get on with work in a moment. Hang on. Go to the fishing net. Open fishing net. So let's go and... Put that mirror carp in my aqua Oh, I can't add to the aquarium? Oh. Why not? Add to the aquarium. Hmm. Not sure why. What does the star rating mean, I wonder? Too big? Do you reckon? Uh, Maybe. Is it size? 15 pound, 1 pound. Yeah, I guess so. Probably because it's way too big. Make a trophy out of it, though. Uh, he. Yeah. Add to trophies. Seems kind of harsh. 13 pounder. Uh, let's sell that 13 pounder. Okay. 10 pounder. Sell the rest of them. Okay. Also, Novi, how are you? How are the dogs? Are they okay? I've got this little sausage over here. She's back from her walkies. Uh, we stopped at a, uh, a cafe and we purchased a, a dog sausage for her. So just a normal human sausage that had been, that had been sliced up into pieces in a, in a paper bag. And Lulu was obsessed the entire walk. She was like, ooh, yummy. Hang on. Uh, no, I haven't seen that one a ride. Not familiar. Oh, one second, sorry. Just going to go back to the aquarium. Hang on. So, yeah, the aquarium. So I can stack the fish there if I wish to keep them. <laughs> I should get, like, a whole thing full of tench. Perch or something. Where's my trophy room? So that's a salmon. 
Ah, there it is. Hey! Nice! Miracarp. Oh, the plaque isn't on it. It is, it's just really hard to read. Oh dear. Miracarp, 29.83 pounder. Hmm. No doubt I was chased off the fishery for doing that. Okay. Go for exit location. What else, what other locations are there? Thank you very much, Carrier Pigeon. Ooh. Where should we go this time? Let's go over here. Yeah. Okay. So what's available? So yeah, the carp will feed much more actively at night. Ah, those are the same lily pads I was fishing from before. So let's, hang on. Go on the other side then. Let's go here, see what's available. Okay, see what I can get. Uh, <sighs> but yeah, hope you feel better, Quebec. Nice, good bait presentation. Hopefully there's some carp near the water, near the uh, the reeds. Oh, is that a bump? Is the fish having a look? Not yet. Oh, hello. What we got? Oh, mind that drag. <laughs> I think the fish is having some pathfinding trouble. Oh no, careful. Come on. So yeah, today, just continuing polish on this video. I'll get started in a minute. Uh, I was meant to... I was up late last night doing some re-recording. So what I normally do is I render it overnight, watch it first thing in the morning, make a big list of things that I need to fix, and then get to work, like right now. Unfortunately, because I was doing some re-recording of the work last night, I woke up really late this morning, so I haven't properly reviewed the render. So after the stream, review the render, spot the errors, fix the errors. I'm afraid it's a bit boring this week. It's a case of just keep doing that until Friday, until hopefully the video is ready. I need to speak to Bavin as well. There's a, there's a section of the video that gets a bit tense, like there's a bit of a sort of building suspense. And I was hoping to sort of ask him to maybe like, can you do like a background track? Something to sort of go, hum, you know, like a background humming sound. Something ominous. So I'll have a word with him. Haven't properly edited that section though. I hope I can have it ready by Friday. <laughs> Whoa, mind the drag. What do you reckon it is? Let's have a look. I'm, I'm too curious. Oh, it's a grass carp. It's a big one. Big, chunky grass carp. Thank you, Moving Duck. Thank you very much, Moving Duck. Thank you. Indeed, everyone has been very helpful. Uh, loads of artists. So Nervous, Twisty, Ilsa, uh, Birdie, Bu Bu Dingo. They've all done fantastic work. Adding it to the, the thing. Fuck. Fuck. Bavin's been help. Well, uh, hope hopefully Bavin will help me out. Hang on. Come on. Uh, lots of people have um, been very patient with me in asking them questions about dynamite in a cave. <laughs> Much to their confusion. Like, what the fuck's he on about? Yeah, do you reckon it's just bugged? Do 
It just doesn't seem to be tiring. Come on, mate. Get over here. Yeah, it's just moving further and further away. <laughs> In order to catch the big one, I've literally got to chase it around the lake. Oh, careful. Hmm. Come on, get over here. Fuck's sake, come on. Because it should be completely knackered by now. And yet it's swimming away from me. See? Just continually getting distance. Should be pretty much on the surface, like... Like, oh, like, fuck it. I'm done. Yeah, I think the game is very, very buggy. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. There we go. Yeah, that's frustrating. It should be completely done by now. Hmm. Can I teleport over there? Not with a fish on the line. Okay. Have to run all the way around again. Right. Uh, so after this fish, I'm yeah definitely gonna go get on with work today. Lots to do. Hang on. Come on, fish. Fucking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed, your arms burn afterwards. Well, after yeah, when when you've caught like a really big carp. Oh. Come on. Maybe I should just press Q and try and be done with it. Get over here. Yeah, it's just totally bugged out. It must be regenerating its energy. Hmm. Alright, fuck it. I'm just going to press Q. There we go. Well, shit. That was annoying. Okay. Um, so yeah, cheers for watching, folks. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I, I've got lots to edit today. Um, so yes, trying to finish this YouTube video that's about three hours long. You can find three of the four pieces below the stream in uh, work in progress form. I'm trying to get this fourth piece ready for you. So um, I've managed to mostly edit it end to end, and I'm polishing it now. Uh, so I'm going to go review it, make a big laundry list of fixes, try to fix them, and generally try to get it ready by Touching Wood Friday. That's my plan. So thank you for watching, folks. Hi there, Dodge. Um, have a lovely afternoon. Hope to catch you again later. And um, yeah, that's that's the plan. So I'll go and get busy, grab some lunch as well, because I'm, I'm really quite peckish. Right. Who's doing what? 
So I'm Joink, sure. whoops. I'm... Joink is doing Grounded, and Digby is doing DCS World. Anyone else on? Let's have a look. Uh, so they they seem to, oh no, yeah, they're the only two on right now. So let me hand you over to let me hand you over to Digby. So he's flying around in a jet. Hang on. I'm sure he can explain what he's doing. Thank you, folks. Have a lovely, lovely afternoon. <laughs>